entering World War II in September 1941, the US government gave priority to the defeat of Germany rather than the war against Japan. Commanding the vast American forces sent across the Atlantic was a huge task entrusted to individuals who had little or no combat experience. Command structures were necessarily complex. In France in late 1944, General George Patton had two other generals, Omar Bradley and Dwight David Eisenhower, above him in the chain of field command. Yet coherent leadership was maintained, great feats of organization accomplished, and tactical and operational skills developed to a high level of excellence. Omar Bradley graduated from West Point in 1915. By the start of World War II, he was a brigadier general specializing in infantry training and tactics. In early 1943, he was sent to North Africa to help Eisenhower iron out problems that had appeared when inexperienced US forces faced battle-hardened Germans. By the end of the Tunisian campaign, the Americans had, in his words, learned to crawl, to walk, then run. Bradley continued to impress as a corps commander in the invasion and conquest of Sicily in summer 1943. His reward was command of US First Army for the Normandy landings in June 1944. Watching the near disaster at Omaha Beach from his offshore headquarters on USS Augusta was an uncomfortable experience, but he distinguished himself in the subsequent battle for Normandy, taking much of the credit for the eventual breakout. Eisenhower gave him command of 12th Army Group, four armies and over 900,000 men. He excelled at the task directing subordinates such as Patton without cramping their initiative. Through the Battle of the Bulge, the crossing of the Rhine, and the final defeat of Germany, Bradley's lead was consistently bold but sound. Mark Clark was the son of the infantry officer. He was wounded leading a company in France in World War I and between the wars made a reputation as a staff officer and infantry instructor. In 1942, he was appointed Eisenhower's deputy for the torch leadings in French North Africa. Before the invasion, he was landed by submarine on the Algerian coast to meet pro-Allied French officers, and he negotiated ceasefire terms with the French authorities once the invasion got underway. Promoted to lieutenant general, he was given command of 5th Army for the invasion of Italy, landing in Salerno in September 1943. Energetic and fearless, Clark led resistance to German counterattacks at Salermo in person and drove forward the advance through Italy until halted by the Gustav Line defense at Monte Cassino. He was not personally responsible for the failure of on-sale landings south of Rome in January 1944, but faced criticism for an ill-judged attempt to force a passage across the Rapido River that cost the Texas Division 2,000 lives. When the breakthrough came in the spring of 1944, Clark chose to capture Rome instead of following orders to encircle retreating German forces, which consequently escaped to the north. He remained in Italy for the rest of the war, becoming Army Group Commander in December 1944. He later served as commander of UN forces in the Korean War. Eisenhower graduated from West Point in 1915. He became a staff officer and in the 1930s, aide to General Douglas MacArthur. He was a major for 16 years before World War II. Catching the attention of Army Chief of Staff George C. Marshall, Eisenhower was catapulted into important posts in Washington, and in the 1942, surprisingly chosen to command US forces in the European theater. Despite his lack of combat experience, his handling of the torch landings and subsequent campaign in North America showed he had the strategic and political skills that the job required. He oversaw the invasion of Sicily and the Italian mainland before his appointment in January 1944 as supreme commander of the Allied forces for the invasion of France. Throughout the rest of the European campaign, he struggled to reconcile the conflicting egos of his British and US generals. His decision-making was sound, apart from the error of backing Operation Market Garden and his firm optimism was moral-boosting. For example, he insisted that the German Ardan offensive of December 1944 be seen as an opportunity and not as a disaster. After the war, he was the first supreme commander of NATO and US president from 1953 to 1961. 
MacArthur was born in an upper-class American family, the son of a soldier. He was an outstanding officer cadet, scoring the highest marks ever achieved at the military academy at West Point. At the end of the First World War, he was already a brigadier general. In 1930, he served as Army Chief of Staff, and in 1935 went as a military advisor to the Philippines, where he retired from the American Army to become a Philippines Field Marshal. In July 1941, Roosevelt made him commander of U.S. forces in the Far East, and he organized the defense of the Philippines against Japanese assault. He was appointed commander-in-chief Southeast Pacific Area in April 1942, and despite his reputation for flamboyance and self-promotion, became an inspirational leader of men. After recapturing the Philippines in 1942, he was made commander-in-chief of all U.S. Army forces in the Pacific. He became Supreme Commander of Allied Powers in the post-war administration of Japan and played a key part in Japan's democratic reconstruction. He was finally relieved of command in April 1951, following arguments with President Truman over policy of the Korean War. Born of German-American parents, Nimitz joined the U.S. Navy in 1901 and rose to distinction in the interwar years as an expert of the new submarine arm. In 1932, he was promoted to Vice Admiral and the following years became Chief of the Bureau of Navigation. On 17 September 1941, he was chosen as Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet with the rank of Admiral, and he set out to reverse the disaster suffered at Pearl Harbor. He was made overall Commander-in-Chief of Allied Forces in the Pacific Ocean area in March 1942, and was responsible as Fleet Commander for the victories at Coral Sea and Midway. His strategy of island hopping led to the isolation and defeat of Japanese garrisons in the Central Pacific area for which he was rewarded with the title of Fleet Admiral in December 1944. After the war, he became Chief of Naval Operations, but retired from active duty in December 1947. As Chief of Staff of the United States Army Air Force throughout the Second World War, Arnold played a central role in the American war effort. He became an Army Airman in the First World War and by 1918 was assistant commander-in-chief of the air service, though he arrived too late in Europe to see combat. In September 1938, he was chosen to head the Army Air Corps with the rank of Major General, and when the Corps was turned into the Army Air Forces in June 1941, Arnold became its chief. He sat on both the American Joint Chief of Staff Committee and the Anglo-American Combined Chiefs Committee. In March 1942, his official title became Commanding General of the U.S. Army Air Forces. He was an energetic, hardworking, and sociable commander, HAP was short for happy, with a clear understanding of technical development and high managerial skills. He suffered from poor health towards the end of the war, when he became the Air Force's first five-star general. Admiral Spruance became a career naval officer before the First World War, and by 1940 was commander of the Caribbean Sea Frontier. After the attack at Pearl Harbor, he commanded Cruiser Squadron 5 in the Pacific under command of Admiral William Halsey. Spruance, nicknamed Electric Brain, had a reputation for a sharp mind and cool temperament. When Halsey fell ill in May 1942, he recommended Spruance should control his career task force for the Battle of Midway. After the engagement, he became Nimitz Chief of Staff, and in mid-1943 was appointed to command the Central Pacific Force, which captured Iwo Jima and Okinawa. He succeeded Nimitz as commander of the Pacific Fleet in late 1945, and then became president of the Naval War College until his retirement in 1948. Between 1952 and 1955, he was U.S. Ambassador in the Philippines. Better known for leading U.S. forces in the campaign for the Pacific island of Guadalcanal, Alexander Patch was commander of forces for the invasion of southern France in August 1944. He joined the army in 1909 and served as an infantry officer in the First World War. In 1940, he was promoted to Brigadier General and helped to train the expanding U.S. Army under General Marshall. 
He went to the South Pacific in 1942, where he formed what he called the American Division, out of number of smaller units stationed there. He led the division on Guadalcanal in October 1942 and in December took over command of all forces on the island, leading some operations himself. He was transferred to Europe, where he took over the US 7th Army from Mark Clark. He led the army in the invasion of southern France and on into southern Germany by the end of the war. He returned to the United States in August 1945 to command the US 4th Army, but died of pneumonia three months later. One of the most controversial but successful of American generals during the Second World War, Patton joined the US Cavalry in 1909, fought in Mexico in 1916 and in France in 1917-18, first on the staff of the US Commander General Pershing, then in command of a tank brigade. In January 1942, he took command of the 1st Armored Corps. He commanded the Western Task Force which landed at Casablanca in November 1942 and commanded the 2nd US Army Corps in Tunisia in March and April 1943 before being recalled to plan the invasion of Sicily. His public persona was flamboyant, aggressive and coarse, and he famously flaunted a pair of ivory-handled pistols. But he was also a scrupulous and hard-working commander. He made morale a high priority. But when he assaulted and abused two combat-weary soldiers in the Sicilian campaign to get them to carry on fighting, the incident almost ended his career. He was recalled to command the 3rd US Army in the Normandy invasion, and his aggression and operational awareness made him an outstanding armored commander. He was made a four-star general in April 1945, but died in a car accident eight months later.